Our goal for now is to follow a um, solution branch along a saddle node bifurcation. So the picture we have in mind is the following. We have our bifurcation parameter. I'm going to call it lambda now because that's sort of customary in this context. And we have our solution branch and we're thinking of like a saddle node bifurcation where we have a stable branch and an unstable branch. And we'd like to follow these solutions, uh, this solution along here. Uh, and it's clear that we will not be able to just use lambda as the parameter because in terms of a smooth continuation, because the number of solutions switches from two to no solution as we vary lambda. And if you want to do a smooth process, we should go along here. And what we'll do is effectively take something like the arc length along that branch as the parameter. So that's the overall setup. Okay, so let's get started by writing, the, uh, providing the setting. So we, we are thinking of a fixed point. So we have some function f of x and lambda. And uh, we're expanding a tailor as always. So that's an f of x zero um, and lambda zero plus, and now we have uh, the derivative of f with respect to x. So that's like an f, uh, it's actually an f matrix, right? It's a Jacobian um, at x zero lambda zero times x minus x zero plus the same game f lambda, a derivative of f with respect to lambda evaluated at that point, fixed point, times lambda minus lambda zero. And then that would be higher order terms. Okay, it's just in terms of notation, let me make clear. So the f underscore x, its ij component is df, <clears throat> um, i by dxj, so that's a matrix, whereas f lambda is a vector, and that's simply dfi by d lambda. Okay, so we need to first um, set the stage in terms of definitions. So we are interested, of course, in the case where we have a fixed point. Well, this is a fixed point, and where this matrix here is singular because uh, we are looking or is singular at a certain point, right? I should uh, say uh, at the bifurcation it's singular. Okay, so the question then arises though, it depends on uh, whether how this vector relates to the range of uh, this matrix. And so one defines um, Okay, so a singular point, no, a singular point is when um, the determinant of f x is zero. Okay, and so then the question is, however, uh, so that means it can be cannot be inverted, but depending, on, but its range may still be, is still um, not zero. I mean, typically it would have one zero eigenvalue and so therefore the range of that, that matrix would actually be n minus one if you live in n dimensions. And so a fault point would be obtained if that vector f lambda is not in the range of fx in which case you cannot solve these equations at linear order because uh, uh, this uh, has a certain n minus one dimensional uh, range, but this is not in that space. And so therefore you cannot um, solve the equation. Whereas you have a simple stationary bifurcation. If um, it is in that range. if that vector lambda is actually in the range of f x. 
Maybe we should do a simple example just to see what these notions are. So let's just do our standard, you know, scalar case where we everything is very simple. So let's say we look at a saddle node bifurcation. Then our equation would be in the minimal case would be lambda plus x squared, right? And so we would have uh, df by dx at the bifurcation point is zero. So at let me let me denote that uh, more clearly. Sorry, let me do that. So at the bifurcation point, which in this case is x equals zero and lambda equals zero, this um, <clears throat> det um, df by dx is zero. Um, but the f by the lambda is equal to one. And so therefore, uh, the range of the f by the x is zero. I mean, this spans only uh, the single point zero, whereas this is not zero. So in that case, you actually cannot um, find a solution on the linear level. And indeed, we know the solutions are obtained by a balancing of lambda and x squared, which is not linear. So contrast that with like a transverse bifurcation. So there we would have lambda x plus x squared. And the f by the x at the bifurcation point is still zero. I mean, it's a bifurcation point after all. So it has to have zero determinant. And if it's a scalar, that means it is zero itself. But um, the f by the lambda evaluated at the bifurcation point is x evaluated at x equals zero, which is zero. And so therefore, the f by the lambda is in the range of the f by the x. And you can solve the equation at the, lead, at the linear order, at this linear order. And indeed, there is a solution at the lin linear order, which is x equals zero. Right? So that's the distinction here. And so we are interested in the case of a fold or saddle node bifurcation, where the range of df by dl, or not, the df by dl is not in the range of df by dx. Okay, so, so let's first now look at an example where we see that um, when we have a saddle node bifurcation, we can't just take uh, the bifurcation parameter itself as, um, as the parameter to characterize the thing. So let's take a two-dimensional example. So say we have the function f of x and our parameter is lambda. So that's why I put a semicolon here to indicate that it's a function of x and there's a parameter lambda, which I'm, I can fiddle with. And let's say it's x1 squared plus x2 squared. Um, minus lambda, which actually, if you do it geometrically, is simply a circle with radius squared of lambda. And the other, the right component of the function is maybe x2 squared minus 2x1 plus 1, which is uh, a parabola. Um, so you can see this is like x1 equals uh, 1 half x squared plus 1. So, um, so you have one half and then you have x1, you have a parabola that looks like that. And so you have two intersection points. And so these would be these two fixed points, so to speak, that uh, we're talking about. So that, however, requires that the radius of um, that circle is large enough so if lambda is decreasing, at some point you get to this situation where the circle is tangential here. And when you increase a decrease lambda further, there's no solution anymore. And uh, you have uh, a saddle node bifurcation because uh, you have uh, both of these fixed points merge and then disappear. So we're trying to solve these equations for the uh, varying lambda. And so, <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's look at the um, Jacobian um, fx, um, which is uh, 2x1, 2x2, minus 2, and 2x2. 
and we see that at that bifurcation point, which has been lambda is equal to a quarter, x2 is equal to zero, and x1 is equal to one half, um, this Jacobian actually becomes um, one minus two zero zero and is singular. Right? It's singular. And um, f lambda is simply minus one zero. And so you see that um, this Jacobian has <clears throat> rank one and its range is uh, generated by the vector one minus two and the vector minus one, which is in the purely in the x direction, versus this is a vector in, in the sort of that along the diagonal, that f lambda is not in the range of this. And so therefore you cannot uh, continue uh, uh, finding these solutions. Um, and you have this situation that you go from zero to two solutions. I mean, as the picture says. The point of uh, this example is that we now can, instead of taking lambda as a parameter and trying to solve for x, we could instead take x2 as a parameter and solve for x and lambda and see how that works. So we <clears throat> took exactly the same calculation. So essentially, we're still trying to solve uh, the, um, sorry, these equations, but we're considering lambda as an unknown and x2 as a parameter. So let me write it in a slightly different way to make that um, explicit. So I introduce a, a function g, which is, oh, which depends on um, um, x1 in lambda and has the parameter x2. And so I write it as x1 squared minus lambda plus x2 squared and um, minus 2x1 plus 1 plus x2 squared. And so if I now want to solve, do the same procedure and solve for given x2, want to solve for lambda and x1, the Jacobian is now actually, um, if I introduce now my unknown vector as y is actually given by x1 comma lambda, and so my Jacobian of g is with respect to y, and so that is then given by 2x1, um, then with respect to lambda, minus one. Uh, second is minus two and zero. Um, no, I didn't do that right. So now I do this. Okay, I do the same analysis now, but I'm considering uh, y as my unknown and x2 is my parameter. And so the Jacobian that I have to look at is the derivative with respect to x1 and lambda. And so I have 2x1 minus 1 minus 2 and 0. And evaluating that at the fixed point, the fixed point is still x1 being one half, lambda uh, x2 equals zero, and uh, lambda being a quarter, that is equal to one minus two minus one zero. And so it's not single anymore. The determinant of g is not zero. So therefore, if the determinant is not zero, I can do my continuation um, with the Taylor expansion, right? I mean, the idea is really that I do the same thing as here, except I'm thinking of this function g is a function of x1 and lambda, and x2 is my parameter instead of lambda. And so then this Taylor expansion is now possible, um, leads to smooth solutions for all, uh, even around the bifurcation point. And in, in pictures, that's relatively clear because what I'm doing simply, I'm taking x2, which is the, this coordinate here. I take that as a parameter for the solution. And as I vary x2, the solution just smoothly goes down like that. 